This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Crick. I remember it so you don't have to. Around this time of year, you usually see a lot of lists for the best Christmas specials. And naturally, lists for the worst Christmas specials. A lot of them we've covered on the show, you name it. Jingle All the Way, Nutcracker 3D, A Food Fight Christmas. But one film that always pops up and I've avoided reviewing because I just didn't wanna is Deck the Halls. It's worth every spot. <laughs> Often referred to as Christmas with the Cranks 2, Deck the Halls follows the tradition of taking a Christmas song you liked fine and making you violently vomit every time you hear it because of the awful film it's tied to. Much like Christmas with the Cranks, the advertising suggests it's based on a clever idea. An upper-class suburbanite is seen as the biggest lover of Christmas, but when a neighbor moves in wanting to go even bigger with his love of the holiday, a friendly feud turns into a comedic war where grown men act like children. Sounds like a decent satire of holiday commercialism. Best get the writer of Big Mama's house to bring us this biting commentary. But oh, come on, a good director can still make it work. Like the man who helmed Big Mama's house two and three! I really want to get this over with, so let's jump right into it. For our sins, this is Deck the Halls. The film opens with winner of the Ben Affleck Award for being in two of the worst Christmas specials ever made, Matthew Broderick, who's an eye doctor named Steve in a quiet, upscale town. I'd love to chat and so, but you know how focused Garta gets on our runs. Oh, oh! What's the time? A minute 58. Couldn't even go two minutes without a pratfall. This movie's for babies. Nobody keeps a secret better than me. I know for a fact, Sheriff Dave is a cross-dresser. I never told a soul. We'd like to thank Adam Sandler for that Hubie Halloween joke even he thought was too pointless to use. Hi, honey. I'm home. Yes, please shut him up. He couldn't even say, hi, honey, I'm home without sounding like a robot who just discovered what this feelings thing is. And even that he played bad! Look, I know it's only December 1st, but I have all the planning to do for the Winterfest. You have a cookbook to write, the kids have school. I have exposition to phone in, like the writers. Look, my dad dragged me from one Air Force base to another. Madison is a loner. Carter's a ten-year-old boy with a... Wow, they're still going. This is the equivalent of, like, five as-you-knows. Give me something else to go off of, a funny walk or something. What is that? He can't even do that convincingly. That was a Mario 3 walk. It looks like a new neighbor is moving in next door named Buddy, played by Danny DeVito. We just moved in across the street. You don't happen to have a cat, do you? Hmm, should I have a Pfeiffer or Chaplin joke on standby? No. Oh, good. I accidentally dropped a fridge on one. Thank God most of it got away. All right, that was a pretty good bit. Off you go. I'm a wasted opportunity. He introduces his wife, Tia, played by Kristen Chenoweth, whose hair and coat is like that fish bird drawing. You don't know where one begins and the other ends. We'll leave you alone for five minutes. Why don't you come on over and we should talk about maybe starting a carpool or something. Welcome! Good luck on the 20 cartoon characters you must be voicing. Honey, could you come over here and give me a little boost? The family drops by to offer help moving in, and... Honestly, so much occurs here, it's better just to show it than explain it. This is Madison. Say hello, Madison. Duh. No, I just got some tired of dating boys. No offense. Mm. Duh. These are my babies. Duh. Hi, girls. Hi, hi. It's like they're trying to get the son scared straight and the daughter scared gay. What the hell is happening in this scene? Will you interstate you know, you know, <gasps> Kelly, thank you. That has been my family for years. That's why I put it on this small shaky surface in the middle of the walkway. I'm glad they're offering so much because I have no sex in the city jokes. Can I live here? Meanwhile, Buddy starts his new job as a car salesman. Buddy! Hey, you, uh, you ready to sell some cars? Cut, cut. Can you do that not like a college humor character? I'm a born car salesman. They try to play a joke by daring him to make a sale to a man not knowing he's the owner of the dealership. I'll give the film credit, this is also a funny bit. I just bought one of my own cars. I paid sticker. 
and sold in two of my children. What does he even want them for? We find out Buddy is going through a couple of jobs, and despite being good at them, he loses interest and they end up moving, going deeper in debt. Yeah, move over, Cratchits. This is the house of a struggling family. You know, one day I'd do something big, something important, something monumental. These don't feel like problems the characters are having as much as the celebrities playing the characters are having. You are. You're going to pay off our monumental debt. But he gets an idea when his daughters show him a site where you can see houses from space. But his doesn't show up. See it from space. I'll light it up. I'm not gonna be invisible anymore. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is the plot of the movie. Buddy wants his house to be seen from space. And it's not even done ironically, like, oh, what a crazy idea that is. No, no. Every time he talks about it, the sympathetic music plays like we're supposed to feel sorry he hasn't achieved his dream. Space, huh? It's the lights. I can't quit this, Bob. I gotta finish this. I think we both know what means more to you than just lights. I really want my house to be seen from space. Man, this is the perfect movie to watch in 2020. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it is ludicrous to expect us to feel anything for a guy bankrupting his family for such a selfish goal. But watching it specifically now hammers in more how unrelatable this all is. Oh, you're making the Home Alone house look poor. God, I feel for you. Can you order me more of these? As a Photoshop fusion of Mike Nelson and Norm MacDonald, I'd love to. It's a horse drawn. This results in him buying a sleigh as well as horses. The wife looks okay with this after that talk of debt literally in the last scene she was in. These horses, I especially like the way you've duct taped the antlers to their heads. Have you tried staples? Take the picture in the sleigh. No, 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 you no, put no, the Santa no, no, suit on. They want to take a picture on the sleigh, but of course the horses get spooked and run off with Broderick inside. Now how would you react in this situation? I know I'd be screaming, oh my god, holy shit, I'm out of control! but that's too much emotion for Broderick. He just lets out a little, oh. Oh. Oh, boy. Hi, ad-lib, that one. Every look he gives is like he's blowing Santa's candy cane. I'm actually starting to wonder if this is his literal O oh face. It's coming, it's coming. Oh. Yeah, that feels like box office disappointment. This feels like the natural progression of the last scene. I had to get your body temperature up, so I stripped us both down and zipped us into this sleeping bag. Ah! Well, you guys missed a great opportunity for the poster. It'd be horrifying, but the film isn't. Oh, this used to be such a nice, quiet neighborhood. The lights only get bigger, and there's a suspicion Buddy is stealing their power to keep them lit. There's also a great impression of the director reacting to every Broderick line read. Okay, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. It turns out Buddy is stealing their power, but they don't know that when they invite him to cut down a Christmas tree. The last ones to the car are losers. It's not like it's a race. Give me the axe, Carter. No way he beats us. I'm sorry, we're supposed to like someone in this movie, right? Does anyone smell gas? It's probably me, but cut me some slack. I'm swinging pretty hard. Matthew Broderick and farts. Two comedic titans together at last. <laughs> We'll give benefit of the doubt that Broderick can hit hard enough to spark a flame, which causes all the trees to burn down. On top of that, <gasps> Buddy's being perceived more as the Christmas guy! We need to get something straight. Uh, around here, I'm the Christmas guy. I'm dreaming of a white privilege. Sir, meaning you is one of the great moments of my life. Thank you, Wallace. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, the finale to Lost sucked. I don't care. There's so many worse scenes coming up. I'm the Christmas guy! I'm the Christmas guy! You know, for an actor, he's terrible, but for an AI who just learned how to talk, he's still bad. Boys, Madison is not allowed to date. Honey, don't worry. It's a one-time thing. They ship out next week. They're in the Navy? Why do I see Broderick's future as being cast in five pure flick sitcoms? Carolers gather for their annual singing, but Buddy's show across the street seems to distract them. Hey, look, that cross-dressing joke came back. I knew they didn't just use it because it was unfunny. If you want to file a complaint, I'll fill out the paperwork. I do, thank you. Well, that walkout wage great. As we see later, Buddy's wife comes out to console him? I guess the light thing is pretty stupid. Now, you touch one bulb on that house, and you've seen the last of my special holiday offers. It might turn out to be something monumental. 
We have decoration boxes we can live in and two daughters we can eat. Spend your last penny on this. It's what baby Jesus would want. Broderick tries to sabotage the lights, but gets caught in the nativity scene, which of course has real animals. There better be poop where he lands. We have poop, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully it's from the animals, though if he bought those, he probably bought a human Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and I doubt he's letting them use the bathroom in his house. What the hell are you doing over there? Calm down, let me explain. The sheriff's a cross-dresser, so this was the only way. Buddy's backup generator relights them, and his only question is about his son on the telephone pole. Not why he's dressed in spy gear and covered in shit. Guess that's a common occurrence for him. Get ready for the cable guy, but with a different Batman villain! Ooh, hi! I'm Stampy, Stamps.com's mascot! Yeah, I've always been a thing! Anyway, this holiday season, more people will be mailing stuff than ever before! That means the post office is going to be busy! You don't have time for that! <laughs> Stamps.com brings the post office and now UPS shipping right to your computer! Mail and ship anything from the convenience of your home or office! No, really! I've always existed! And I've been very popular! Why won't you believe Stampy? Oh, no, anyway, with Stamps.com, anything you can do at the post office, you can do with just a few clicks. Plus, Stamps.com saves you money with deep discounts you can't even get at the post office. Why won't you believe I was always a thing? Don't you remember all the good memories we had? Like that one time? Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. Stamps.com is a must-have for any business, whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller fulfilling orders during this record-breaking holiday season, or even a warehouse sending thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. So much time and effort went into my development! The creator didn't just come up with me over a lunch break! Literally hours just went into my name alone! Stampy! No other stamp is gonna have that name! Oh my god! Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send! Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off! It's that simple! I mean, can you think of any other stamps that would have the name Stampy? Probably a lot the more I think about it! Oh no! I'm incredibly unoriginal! I, I don't know what to think about anything anymore! Well, with Stamps.com, you get five cents off every first-class stamp and up to four percent off priority mail and up to 62 percent off ups shipping rates not to mention it's a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters stamps.com is a no-brainer saving you time and money it's no wonder over 900,000 small businesses already use stamps.com trust stampy i'm a good mascot if you don't trust me or listen to me or recommend me to your friends i, I don't i don't know what i'm gonna do i i i, I, I just don't know i'm not stampy you Stampy needed to step out for a moment, no, but if he was here, I'm sure he would want to tell you to not spend a minute of your holiday season at the post office this year. Sign up for Stamps.com instead. There's no risk, and with the promo code Nostalgia, you get a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Nostalgia. That's Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Nostalgia for your special offer today. This is Envelope the Envelope saying Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Who's Stampy? I'm Stampy. Will you not? Yes, I am. Will you not? Yeah. You're not. We've talked about this. Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. Also, check out at the end of the video to hear about our Super Smash Bros. Tournament charity stream December 22nd. But he seems to be treating the family nicer, giving them a new tree as well as a new car. If you don't like the color, we could change it out. And they said the same thing about the Human Torch. His costume, what do you think I meant?
They say you have to pay for the car by lunchtime or you're going to be arrested. The car is apparently stolen from the lot, but that's okay. Buddy soon won't have a job there anyway, as he hasn't shown up in days because he dedicated himself to the lights. The Christmas lights. See, all my life I've been looking for that one thing. I've always quit everything I started. I can't quit this, Bob. Movie, this is not a tender scene. This is a sick moment. You need music like this. The Christmas lights. See, all my life I've been looking for that one thing. I can't quit this, Bob. I gotta finish this. And that's what you play if there isn't a killing spree ending. Project demands the car be paid for, but when he's turned down, he says he's calling his attorney. Is that the way you settle things like men? What's the matter, your mommy out of town? Okay, okay. That's, you wanna go? Let's go outside right now, come whoa, whoa. on. I'll act like I'm on a hamster wheel you to death. There is an ice skating race. Yeah, great idea. Yeah, the minute I looked at both of them, I immediately thought, speed skaters. They of course agree to it because this movie hates you and they show up at the Winter Festival trying to best each other even before the race. Not too late to back out, pinch. Oh, what hilarious outcome will this result in? Let's, let's just, I can't. Oh, didn't even attempt one. I think the actresses literally abandoned the scene. They were so embarrassed to be in it. Now that is something we could agree on. The sheriff looks fantastic. Perhaps our leads are too likable. Let's have them drool over their daughters. Who's your daddy? Oh God, I'm your daddy. Oh, I'm your daddy. Ah, oh, my God. You may think this is a first for Broderick, but again, what was the relationship between Simba and the lionesses? My eyes, my eyes. We're going to hell. Fun fact, my Blu-ray of this film also came with holy water to wash my eyes out. The annual speed skating races will begin in five minutes. Thank you, God. Why was that announced in a church? Very nice. Very nice suit. Dad, Dad, he's our man. If he can't do it, nobody can. Dad! He looked at our asses, everybody! Go, Dad! Their stunt doubles race each other, resulting in Buddy winning the race, meaning Broderick has to pay for the car. Fine, but the last time I looked at the satellite pictures, not a blip has a feel to be invisible. What? You leave that man's dream of emotionally and financially fucking his family alone. Maybe literally too. Gee, I guess I feel so sorry for him. Oh look, he's selling his wife's priceless heirloom. Still feel bad, you piece of shit? This is a bad dream, right? I'm gonna wake up and this won't be happening. Shortest review of this movie ever. You pawned my grandmother's vase. I went for a loan, and if you don't have a job... You lost your job? That was a pretty awkward way for you to find that out. He literally played a blood-hungry monster who wanted to drown children in a pool of toxins, and he's still more likable than this guy. How am I supposed to afford a camel on a car salesman's salary? Not surprisingly, his wife and kids leave him, but what does that matter? His dream of being seen from space has almost come true. <laughs> was on the light show that honestly had it been in another movie maybe would be funny but all we can think about is how much i want these characters to walk across lights barefoot like from home alone we all know what broderick's reaction would be oh oh he decides to call a professional to finish things off which sadly is not as lethal as it sounds Ooh, he went to indiana the atomic warlord wow he tries setting off the fireworks at Buddy's house, but of course it backfires, setting his living room ablaze. The cast finally calls it quits. I mean, the family finally calls it quits. What is your favorite Christmas memory? Dad and I moved to Alabama, and on Christmas morning we woke up, ate french fries, and drank chocolate milk. Christmas traditions are born in those little chocolate milk and french fry moments. And sometimes a cheap little cartoon can leave much more of an impact than how much did this movie cost Christ! It's the whole... Oh, that's nothing. What is this? Hey, look at that. A whole month of not noticing a cord running between the two houses. You dressed up and sabotaged him because you thought he was stealing power, but you never checked to see if he actually was. Let's, let's just... I can't. Buddy, I guess, finally feels bad and takes down all the lights. But Broderick has an idea about how to use them outside their wives' hotel. No shit, you put this all up in one night with nobody hearing you and not a single traffic violation written. What was the construction sign like for that road closed due to dipshits crumbling marriages? I wonder if twins share bad line reads. Mom, all these lights, 
We're dad's lights. <laughs> she had a look like- I did that awful. Oh, we're going with that? Okay. I got you this little pre-Christmas gift. <laughs> well, it's gonna take a lot more than that to win her bow, all right? We're not gonna use our credit cards for the rest of our lives. Oh, thank God. Can you imagine wasting all that money on useless therapy? It just seemed like your whole life had gotten so loud that the only thing you were gonna hear was an empty house. Okay, so at least it has a good message. That what's most important about Christmas are the little things. Dinner with family, close friends, and smaller moments, no matter how rich or poor- Bullshit, we gotta see those lights from orbit! I told them Buddy was a little short on lights, and uh, maybe they'd like to come and help out. MTV is sending someone down to do a story on Buddy's lights! Why, we better put him back up. The little things. French fries and chocolate milk, seeing your house from space, they're practically the same spelling. He's put up a Christmas light display that can hopefully be seen from space. They're gonna do it! They're gonna turn on the light! Fuck you, you're part of the problem! <laughs> it blows a fuse and... okay. Now we're forced to really look at what matters around Christmas with no power or fancy lights. Whoa, everyone takes out their cell phone singing Silent Night and they see the problem. <laughs> I don't know what the critics are talking about. Nothing sums up the meaning of Christmas. The season of giving, the humble beauty of a child born in a manger like rich people using their portable computers to help a man who committed countless crimes illuminate his house to be seen from space. That's what Christmas is all about. Can you imagine if they gave all that money used on those lights to the poor? Jesus would have punched himself in his baby face. No, no, having your house seen from space is what it's all about. Thank God, absolutely nobody learned a lesson here. Someone needs to go to hell for this. Wow, this truly is as bad as everyone says. It takes what could be a satirical premise and turns itself into the very monster the film is trying to warn you not to become. On top of that, the comedy is awkward, the writing's abysmal, the message hypocritical. It's just horrendous. I can see why it makes its way onto so many worse lists, because if people actually bought the bullshit this film was spewing, I'd tell George Bailey to jump. God, this film put me in a bad mood. Next week is Christmas, it's 2020. I want a Danny DeVito Christmas film that intentionally makes me feel bad. Tragic irony or poetic justice, you tell me. Mom, all these lights. We're Dad's Lights. Hey everybody, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this one is a little different because we are actually doing a Super Smash Brothers Tournament charity stream on Twitch. This will be December 22nd from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central Time and we're doing it for Extra Life. This is an organization that raises money for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. This is the link to donate and on that page there is an incentive redemption for $10 to enter the tournament. It is limited to 35 people and folks are still free to donate even without entering it. On top of that, if we reach our goal of $2,000, we will do the One Chip Challenge live on stream. We're so excited and so afraid. So go to the link, see if you can get in. If not, just feel free to donate or spread the word. Hope to see you guys there.